It's time for an upgrade. In today's video, I'm going to be completely rebuilding the top of my electric drivable camper by turning it into a wooden cabin. It's going to take a whole lot of work to turn this into this, but I'm going to be showing you every step of the way on how it was built. Then we're going to load it up with gear, drive it off road through the snow so we can enjoy a beautiful night full of delicious foods, sweet treats, fun technology, and more all while staying toasty warm in our cozy little cabin. And it all starts with the old version of the camper. And don't get me wrong, I still think this thing is awesome, but it really is just a big yellow tarp screwed down on top of a small little greenhouse. And sadly, the last time I ended up using this, when I was unloading my gear, I accidentally ripped away some of the material from the zipper on the greenhouse. So it's definitely time for an upgrade now. With the yellow tarp fully unfolded, I take out all the screws that are holding it down to the frame on the cart. I remove it and set it off to the side. I can then crawl inside the greenhouse and begin to remove all of the little clamps that are holding down the greenhouse to the frame of the structure. And with everything removed, it's as simple as lifting up the greenhouse and just walking it off the frame. All while remembering all of the great times we had spending some nights inside of this little greenhouse shelter. And with the camper, now just a blank slate, it's time to build a new structure. And this time, I'm going to be using some wood. I mark and begin to cut out all the pieces we're going to need for the project. And I ended up with a nice little pile of wood. Okay, maybe it was more than a little pile of wood. Fine, it was actually a massive pile of wood. It always surprises me how much material these projects actually take to make. And the first pieces that I begin to assemble are going to be the pieces of wood that are going to run the whole length of the vehicle. I take a smaller piece of wood and some wood clamps to hold it together. Then I place in a whole bunch of screws to really screw it together nice and permanent. With one of the beams complete, it was time to repeat the process three more times. So I'll have four in total, two for the bottom, and two for the top. Now I can take some of these metal corner braces, which I think are just awesome. They make assembling really strong boxes super easy. They're made specifically for 2x4s, so they fit the dimensions perfectly. And you just slot the pieces into place. Then you can go around with some screws and tighten it all down. I do end up taking one really long screw for a final screw to really pinch it all together. So now it was a matter of going around to all the other corners and attaching those braces as well to make a really strong base for the structure. And for assembling the top part, it involved using some more of those metal corner braces. I slot them into place using an off cut of a 2x4 to measure the depth to line it up and I screw it into the corner. And I went ahead and attached another one to the other side, just the same. Now I can take a 2x4 and slot it in between the metal braces and add some screws to really hold it in place. I head over to the front of the vehicle, repeat the same process, attaching the metal corner braces and the beam of 2x4 in between them as well. Now I can take the other long pieces of wood I made earlier, slot them into each of the sides of the metal braces, and add in a whole bunch of screws to make the thing nice and permanent. But I want it to be a little bit stronger than just four beams on each of the corners. So I grab some more pieces of 2x4 from the pile I cut earlier. And I also have a bunch of these little metal joiner plates. They're just some thick metal with a bunch of screw holes. And I position them on the ends of each of the 2x4s and take a whole bunch of screws to fix them into place. Then I flip over to the other side and attach those pieces of metal plate as well, just the same. Then I take one of the support beams and I line it up with the top and bottom and I place in a whole bunch of screws to affix it in place. Then I took the remaining pieces of wood and attached them all around the frame on both sides with a whole bunch of screws to really make the frame a super solid piece. And it's already feeling a lot stronger. But if you notice, it's still not actually attached to the base of the vehicle and that needs to change. So that's where these come in. Some massive, massive screws. I first make sure that both of the frames are lined up perfectly. Then I take the longest drill bit I've ever used. I go around to a few places I marked on the frames and I begin to drill through the two x four in the top all the way drilling through the two x four in the bottom. Then I can take the massive screw and screw it down super tight through both of the pieces of two x four on the top and bottom frame. I then go around with all of the other massive screws and begin to drill and screw them in places all around key points in the frame. And honestly, this part was super satisfying to just drive in these massive screws to really pinch these two pieces of frame together. And there it is. We successfully joined the top frame and the bottom frame. It's on there super secure and there's no way it's going to come off. Next step 
it's time to add ourselves a nice little frame for the roof. I take a bunch of two foot sections of wood that I cut out from my pile earlier, and now we have to cut some angles into it. So I got myself the rafter square, which I've never used before, but it's actually really easy, and you can use it to measure and mark some angles. Then I can take a saw and cut off the extra on the line I just marked. Then I lay the two pieces I just cut down together, and using some small blocks of wood and a bunch of screws, I screw in the pieces together to hold it in place. I then take another length of 2x4, using it just as a straight edge, I go ahead and mark the other areas I need to cut off, then using the saw, I go ahead and trim off the extra. And now we have one of the support beams for our roof. And after a little while working, we had all of our other pieces of the rafters made. So it's time to install them on the rest of the frame. I go ahead and lay the one on the corner and put in some large screws to hold it in place. Then I take some of these metal brackets called hurricane ties and I line them up where I want each of the other rafters to be and I put in some screws to hold them in place. Then I can take the other rafter and lay it down in this slot. I step inside and take some pliers and I bend down the hurricane ties so they line up with the 2x4s. Then I go around with some big screws and put some in through the rafter itself then a couple through the hurricane ties as well. Then it was time to go around to all the other places where we want the other rafters and install those ones just the same. Since the rafters on the corners don't have space for a hurricane tie, I put in a large screw, then I take some of those metal brackets and I attach them to the frame of the base for both sides. And this thing's really starting to look like a little structure. We get all of the base frame made and I'm honestly super proud of it. But it's not gonna do much protection without some walls. And for the walls, I'm using the same wood that I used for the floor of this, and that is some 1x12 board, and I do have to trim off some of the extra. I can then take a board, line it up with the wall, hold it in place with some wood clamps, and using a piece that I just cut off from a minute ago, I made a little stencil so I can mark out some places that I could go ahead and drill and put in some screws to firmly attach it to the frame. Then it was a matter of screwing in some more screws to the beams, laying on some more pieces of the wall, and attaching those as well. And I planned it out so each of the walls is going to be exactly four boards high. Then it was off to the other side where I installed that wall just the same. Then it was time to install the boards for the roof, which is a similar process, laying them down, marking out the places, and putting in a bunch of screws for each of the boards on both sides. Laying some boards out on the roof still left a little gap on the top, which I don't want, so I had to take a table saw and cut some of the boards lengthwise so that I can then lay them on the gaps that there was on the top and put in some screws to hold them in place. And now we have ourselves a really nice strong roof. But if we look at the back, there's still a massive hole, and I don't want that because I want there to be a nice door right here. So let's get to making a door. I grab some more pieces of wood from the pile I cut out earlier, and I begin to lay them out in the shape of the door. Then I take some of these metal corner brackets, and I place them all over each of the corners, and I put in some screws to hold them in place. Then I take some more of the boards that I use for the walls and the roof and I begin to layer them on the door. Using the stencil again, I go ahead and drill and put in some screws to hold all the boards in place. And this is the part where I remembered to forget to install the hinges. So I actually have to go ahead and unscrew and remove some of the boards so I can place the hinge down, mark it with a marker, place a board underneath it so that I can drill out some holes and using some bolts I can go ahead and attach the hinge. I go ahead and do the same to the other hinge as well. I was originally going to just screw the boards back over the hinges, but I thought if I ever needed to access the bolts on them, it would just be easier if I cut out some little rectangles so that I can take the boards, place them over the hinges, and they're still exposed while I can still screw the boards back down in place. Now I take another length of 2x4, the same length as the door. I line it up with the other holes on the hinges so that I can mark them both. Then I can take out a drill and begin to drill out those holes as well. I take the board I just worked on and I bring it over to the back of the vehicle. And using a bunch of screws, I go ahead and affix it to the back. Then I can take a drill and using the holes I drilled in just a minute ago as a guide, I can use the drill to drill through the other 2x4 in the frame. I can then take some bolts and thread them through all the holes I just made. Then I can pick up the door, walk it over to the bolt sticking out, gingerly lay it on top of it while hand threading on some nuts. Then I can later go back and tighten down with the ratchet. 
I then grab another 2x4 that's the exact height of the door, I line it up with the other side on the back wall, and I put in a bunch more screws to screw that in place as well. So now we have the door on hinges, and it closes really close to this board I just screwed in, which will be super useful later. And with that, we have all the wood added on. But right now, it's just unfinished, untreated wood. And I don't want that. I want to protect it a bit. So let's get to staining. And the first step is to make a nice little protective layer on the ground. And not only are these boxes protecting the ground from stain, these are actually the same boxes that protected me from when I made my little shelter in the winter. That was a lot of fun to do. And these boxes, I still find myself using them in projects. And I know they've helped at least two people move as well. It always makes me smile when I have another use for these boxes. But it's time to get to staining. I'm using this really big brush for staining. I believe it's used for like staining large surfaces and wood decks. And it's honestly making super quick work of staining the outside of my structure. And after what felt like just a few minutes, I was already staining the roof. Then I began to stain the back door. Then it was off to the other side wall as well. I then began to stain all of the fresh 2x4s for the front window section. Then I jumped inside and began to stain the inside of the roof, all while trying to avoid the drips on my face and glasses, which was kind of impossible. Then it was onto the walls where I covered those with a nice thick coat. Then I slathered a bunch on the floor as well. I wasn't originally sure if I was going to put it on the battery box, but it looked so out of place without it, so I decided to give it the royal treatment and covered that with the wood protection as well. And the next day, after letting everything dry, and the wood protection turned out beautiful. I love the color, it should protect it from rain and snow, and it makes it feel like way more of a cabin. But there's still a lot more work before we can take this thing out. Like for one, this thing's going to need some windows. And that's exactly what I have in these rolls. But you're probably thinking, what kind of windows come in rolls? Well, let me tell you. These are some rolls of clear vinyl. These are sold as like table protectors. They're like one and a half millimeters thick. And I think they're going to make perfect windows for this little camper. The first step to installing these is actually going to involve some of this stuff called alien tape. It's like a thick cushioned double sided tape that has a nice grip to it. And I'm going to put it up against wherever the vinyl is going to butt up against the wood. Then I can gently take the vinyl sheet, place it precisely in the middle and roll it over the edges of the alien tape. I can then take a staple gun and some stainless steel staples just because it's going to be outside and I begin to staple the vinyl through the alien tape to the wood all around all of the edges. With the vinyl now stapled to the roof, I want to make it more permanent so I take some cedar stripping and I clamp it in place so I can take my drill and go ahead and drill some holes and put in some screws so that it really pinches together the layers of the vinyl, the alien tape between some wood and screws. Now it's a matter of taking some more of the cedar stripping, lay it along all of the other edges, and screwing those pieces as well to really secure the vinyl to the roof so that no moisture or water, or rain or snow will get through the barrier. With the top roof window on, it's time to go out to the side, take some alien tape, make a barrier around each of the edges. Then I can take the vinyl, slowly roll it over nice and even, put in some staples to hold it in place, Finishing it off with some more of the cedar stripping and screwing it all down nice and tight and secure. This side window did have a little bit of extra, so I take a utility knife and I just cut off all of the extra vinyl from the top to the bottom. Then I cut off the extra on the bottom length as well. And now we got a side window installed. This thing is sweet, it's pretty rugged, it's nice and clear, and I'm really getting excited about this. I headed over to the other side and I installed that window just the same. Now it's time to install the front window. I make myself a nice little gasket of the alien tape on all of the edges. Then I roll down the vinyl nice and carefully, followed by a bunch of staples, and then a bunch more cedar, screwing it all into place, making sure that this window will never fall out. Then I took the utility knife to trim off all the extra along the bottom. And I'm actually going to be reusing this piece for this top window right here. So I build up a border of the alien tape so I can stick the vinyl to it. Then I gently roll the vinyl piece on top, followed by some staples, then some more pieces of cedar to finally screw it all in place. 
There was this tiny little gap, so I made one more small piece and screwed that in as well. And there it is. We finally have all of our windows for our little cockpit area. They look great, they feel great, nice and rugged, and I think this is going to give us a wonderful view whenever we're driving this thing around. I am super excited. For this next part, I thought it would be only fair if I used a piece of the yellow tarp, because this is the tarp that's been with me for a while. I first used it when I made my little teepee out in the forest, then I used it for my first version of my little drivable camper, and I even used a piece of it for the sunshade on my boat. So I think it's only fitting if I keep the tradition going and use some of it on the camper right here. I begin by laying it out flat on the ground as much as I can. I pull out my tape measure, I mark along the edge of it, then I take out my scissors and begin to cut out a nice big rectangle out of the massive yellow tarp. With it cut out to the size I need, I can go ahead and lift it off the ground, throw it on top of the roof, line the thing on up, then I'm going to take some more of that tape, put a nice seam of it along the edge right here, and stick the tarp down to the roof. Then I can take a couple staples to hold it in place, followed by some blocks of wood with some more of the tape on them to cover up all the staples. I can then drill and screw the blocks into place, and it's going to really keep the tarp from flapping around and keep it on there nice and secure. I then head over to the opposite side, and I fix that piece of tarp down to the roof as well with some more of the tape and some more blocks of wood on top, followed by some screws to really pinch it in place. And I did it on the opposite side of the roof as well. I took just a few small pieces of tape along the edge and just a couple single staples just to hold the side down so no wind gets caught under it. For this little front section right here between both of the vinyl windows, I decided to add a couple pieces of the tape followed by a small thin strip of the yellow tarp and a couple staples just to hold it in place. And this is just going to make me feel a little bit better about that seam between the windows right there. After doing the same on the opposite side, it was time to tackle the loose flap on the back. I fold it inside the crease, then I take the staple gun, put in some staples, then I take out my utility knife, and I trim off all of the extra. And now we have a nice waterproof roof that will always remind me of some of my previous adventures. Walking around this thing, I still feel like it's missing some stuff, like for one, some really nice windows. So, I ended up getting these, and I just thought these were so cool. These are like port windows like you'd find in a boat or something, and they open and close, They're actually made out of glass, and they have a nice seal around them. And I ended up getting two of them. And the way that I plan on installing it is using the biggest hole saw I have ever used. It was time to take out the tape measure, mark exactly where I wanted the window on the side, pull out the safety gear and the big drill, and just go for it. I lined it up with the hole, and I just began to drill through it. And honestly, these hole saws are absolutely terrifying to use. <laughs> but they left a really nice hole. There's also this small little registration point on the window, so I have to take out a jigsaw and cut out a small little notch as well. And you can see, I can slot in the window, and it fits like a glove. But before I stick it in there permanently, I want to take some clear silicone, and I go around the perimeter of the window with a nice thick bead. Then I can take the window and plop it in the hole. I take some more of the silicone, and I fill up all the other gaps around the window, and I make another little bead all around the exterior as well. I take the other half of the window, and I line it up with the registration point and push it in place. Using the holes in the side as a guide, I drilled and put in some machine screws and bolts, and tightened it all down through the wood. One down, one more to go. I headed on to the other side, and I popped a hole through that wall. Then I went ahead and installed that window, just the same with a bunch of silicone and machine screws and nuts to tighten it down through the wood. And now we have some really cool looking windows on this thing. I love how you can actually open and close them. They're made of glass, they have a nice gasket, and they just make me smile. On to the back door. Our door is on there, but it's not much of a door right now other than it can open and close. But I really want a handle for this thing. So that's exactly what I got. It's a stainless steel handle and it has a lock and key. So let's get it on there. I've never drilled some holes for a door handle before, so I ended up buying this little jig that you slide on the door. But since my door was a little too thick, I ended up kind of breaking it and having to use some wood clamps to hold it in place. And this just holds it nice and steady so that you can drill some holes for the handle. And since my door is a little too thick, for this next part, I kind of have to just line up the hole and go by feel. And this is my first time doing it, and honestly, I think it turned out fine. 
I then took my oscillating tool to cut out a little section for the little locking bit. This part would definitely be easier if I had a nice set of chisels, but I don't, so I'm just using this, and I think it turned out fine. I then took some more of the wood sealer, and I touched up all the areas I just drilled and exposed, just so I can make it a little bit more weatherproof if I can. Then it was time to install the locking mechanism with a couple screws into the frame of the door. And since my door frame's a little extra thick, I actually had to shave away a little bit around the handle area so that I could actually fit my handle through it securely. Then I could finally take the handle, thread it through the hole in the locking mechanism, and put in the screws to hold it in place. And now our door's got a handle, but there's nowhere for it to actually catch on. So that's what we gotta do next. I mark where I need to drill a hole through the side of the 2x4. I pull out a Forstner bit, which is honestly my favorite drill bit type, and I line it up with the mark I just made, and these just make such a clean hole, it's always so satisfying to use them. Then I take some more of the wood sealer, and I give it a quick little coat. I can then install the little metal catch with a couple screws into the 2x4, and now we finally have a place for our door to catch and lock on. And this is the first real door I've ever made, and I think it turned out wonderful. And I'm happy I decided to get a locking handle just because I think it's going to be really useful if I want to lock myself in or lock my little camper whenever I take this thing out. So the door locks, it opens and closes, but I still feel like it's missing something. A nice big window. So that's exactly what this is. This is like a dog fence window. You put it in a fence so your dog can look out, but I thought it'd be perfect addition to the back door of our camper. I grab a tape measure and measure exactly where I want the window center to be. Then it's time, once again, to use the biggest hole saw I've ever used, and it reminds me of Swiss cheese. And thinking back and looking at this footage, I could have probably gotten away using a jigsaw and a compass, because these hole saws are honestly terrifying to use. They just feel like they want to rip out of your hands, but they do do a good job. Using the window as a template, I marked four holes and drilled it out. I took some more of the silicone, and I put a nice thick bead of it all around the bubble of the window. Then I could take it to the hole that I drilled, pop it in place. I then head over to the other side of the window where I take some more of the silicone, place a bead all the way around the outside, followed by the other half of the window and some nuts and bolts to tighten it all together through the wood of the door. After doing a little bit of silicone cleanup, we finally had our door together and this thing looks awesome. So we can step inside of our little shelter, look through our little dog window, and it looks great. With our door now fully complete, there's a section above the door that I've kind of been forgetting about. I was originally hoping that I'd have enough vinyl left over, but sadly, I don't have a big enough piece, but I do have enough of the yellow tarp, so I am going to be using the yellow tarp as a makeshift window. I set up a little perimeter of the alien tape and stick it in place, followed by just a whole bunch of staples on top all the way around it. For this window, I decided against putting some cedar stripping around it, just because I'm not sure if this is going to be my permanent solution, so I'll just leave it as is, and it'll just make it a little bit easier if I want to upgrade it later. On the side of the door here, where the hinges are, there's actually quite a big gap, which isn't something I want, so I take some of this window rubber sealer, and I place it along the inside of the seams, both on the frame and the door itself, and this stuff is super easy to install. It has an adhesive back, so you just cut it to length and you push it on. So now when I close the door, we can see it's completely filled up by the window seal insulation. No rain or snow is going to be getting in there. Awesome. For the next part, I wanted to add this thing. It was sold as like a clothes hanger. I just thought it'd be really useful if I ever wanted to hang things on the outside of this, like a lantern or boots or really anything like that. And the cool thing about this hanger is it actually swivels side to side so that when I'm driving, I can just tuck it away and I won't have to worry about hitting stuff. With the top complete, the tires are looking pretty puny. So it's time to change them. These ones are a couple inches bigger. They have huge nubs on them and they should grip the snow a lot better than the old ones. Now, with our upgrade complete, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to load it up with gear and drive this thing out through the snow. Let's have some fun.
Well, we made it. We made it out here in our little mobile cabin. This thing is awesome. It was just plowing through the snow. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I'm impressed with how much power this thing has. And I'm pretty sure I used quite a bit of battery to get out here, to be honest. I ended up using like 29% of the battery to get out here, but I was pushing these motors to their max, especially since I went so far into Thut 6 snow. But we still have a lot of battery left to enjoy the night and also to get back because that's going to be important as well. There's definitely some points where we're struggling to get through the snow just because the snow is so tall. It's probably up to the front of the vehicle itself. And there's parts where the vehicle was like bouncing and skipping because it was like hitting the snow and kind of jumping off of it. Like it needed almost like a, a sled nose in the front to get past it all because uh, it's a lot of snow out there. But this thing managed to get out here a lot easier than I thought and a lot better than I thought. So I'm super happy about that. And I really do like the windows on this thing super sturdy they did steam up a little bit but honestly not too bad and they're just massive got these massive windows in here it's like a sunroom i'm also curious if these windows are going to act like a greenhouse kind of just trapping in some heat got the nice kind of clear cockpit area then i got all my gear back here look at this thing this thing is so cool <laughs> and you can see how thick the snow is i don't know how many inches maybe five or six inches thick and it was definitely struggling to get through it at some points just because uh you can see it's not that high off of the ground i'm pretty sure at points the snow was up to kind of the frame and it was kind of bouncing off the frame causing this kind of skipping effect when i was driving but hey we managed to get out here it's a nice cool day today this thing's looking great it's got the windows got the front cabin on it the windows are holding up beautifully and we got down here, nice view. Got a frozen lake there. I'm really not sure how frozen it is and there's a lot of snow on top of it so there's no way I'm going out there to stand on it or anything like that. You can see overhead, we got some geese flying. <laughs> cool, flying south. Anyways, it's time to head inside of our little cabin and begin to set up camp for the night. All right, so we are in our little mobile cabin. We have our back door with included lock. And then up here in the front, we can see all my gear. I kind of stacked it on top of the battery box. Got like food, camera gear, electronics, more camera gear. That's my inverter right here because I plan to power some cool stuff tonight. And this right here, this is actually an upgraded table from my other one. It's just a little bit wider and it's a little bit taller. And I think it's going to be really useful for tonight. And on the ground, I had myself a new kind of mattress topper. This is a new one. Uh, the last time I used my inflatable one, the thing popped. So I just ended up getting myself a different one. I also ended up bringing these things. I've used them in my past camper builds. And since I don't have the metal bars like the greenhouse did, I decided to get these. They're just kind of like uh, metal hooks. And I also brought out a drill out here. Took up a lot of space. Maybe I should have done this not out here, but hey, I thought it'd be fun. So I'm just gonna kind of hang these on the walls. I also brought some carabiners and some rope. Yeah, now we got a little bit of wall storage, which is nice. It's just so bright outside with all of the sun reflecting off this snow. It's just like a bright white wonderland. And this is my little uh, gas meter just for like carbon monoxide and stuff like that. And that is for if I decide that I want to run my little buddy heater because this thing is pretty cool. You can uh, warm up this place super nicely in here. I'm sure I can. And I do also have the windows, but I do have the gas meter as well. So I'm not worried about carbon monoxide or anything like that if I decide to use this. And I'll probably end up using this uh, a little bit closer to dinner time or something like that. I mean, since I ended up bringing this drill out here, I decided that I want to take a screw and put it in right there just so I can take something like my backpack and uh, just hang it off the side. <laughs> I knew I should have brought this for a reason. But yeah, it just kind of keeps things out of the way. But for now, it's pretty cool in here. And you can actually see a little bit steamy in here. Man, these windows are pretty sweet, to be honest. Very cool. You can see some little flakes of snow as well. 
and there is a nice gasket around these windows and so I don't have to worry about snow or anything like that entering in our little cabin. Got my boots here for now. I'm probably gonna keep them inside because it is gonna snow a little bit tonight. Something interesting that I noticed is some of the silicone is still a little bit white just because it's so cold outside. I guess it's really taking a long time to dry because it is supposed to dry clear like in uh, some of the other areas. And we can stick our little head out our little window here and this is such a cool little window. <laughs> I always wanted a project to put one of these on and I think that this back door was a perfect solution for it. And my little makeshift window out of uh, the tarp is nice. It lets some light in. Got a nice yellow hue to it. Kind of reminds me of the old greenhouse as well. This thing is so cool and I'm so happy to finally be out here. It was a wild ride getting it out here through that thick snow. I mean, it didn't fall apart. It's still nice and strong. This thing is awesome. It's super heavy and those motors were really being pushed to the limit. I think if I'm ever gonna do an upgrade or build a new one, which I'd like to build a new one, it would either have to have bigger motors, more motors, or more tires, or any combination of something or maybe something completely different. It's way cozy in here. I have so much room and it's awesome. It turned out really well. I'm super happy with it. But yeah, I think it's time to clean up camp a little bit, just enjoy ourselves and then probably make some dinner soon because I am pretty hungry. Probably have a little over an hour left of sunlight and it's going to start getting dark out here and I got some pretty fun things planned. So let's have some fun. And here we go. We got the camper all set up and I even have a little tiny trash over here when you hit the button. Da -da -da -da. We got a little trash. I got to put a bag in it though. Ah. And you can see I got a little lamp up here. I'll probably turn this on in a little bit. And I also have my little fan lamp combo, which is a cool little thing. It's got a light in it. You can use the remote to have a light and also has a fan. I'm probably not going to use the fan unless I burn cooking tonight or something. Fingers crossed I won't. And if you saw the last version of my camper video, you'll probably know that inside this box is actually an inverter. And this right here is attached to my battery terminal. So there's 48 volts in here. And if I plug it in, and if you can see, this is glowing now. It instantly turned on. We have 120 volts coming out here. Very cool. It'll be very useful when we're out here in our little cabin on wheels. So now I can take my little lamp that's hanging on the wall. We got ourselves a nice little light in here. <laughs> Sweet. Since I do have power out here, I also did bring my electric heated blanket again. It's becoming a common theme whenever I have my inverter and battery with me because it just makes winter camping so much nicer. So I got myself an electric heated blanket, which will be really nice for tonight. And I'll just set it up there for now. Oh. Oh. thing is very nice. I'm just worried that this fan's going to declip and just fall on me. <laughs> and we'll see. All right, got my table set up. I finally have the camper set up where I feel comfortable and ready for the night. I got my little lantern on, got my little power strip with my little watt meter here, and it's time to make some dinner. And for dinner, I want to have myself a nice hearty soup. So I got a bunch of vegetables in here. I also got some mushrooms, got myself some soup mix, some just like soup stock. I'm probably going to throw in a couple noodles and I'm going to try to make some dumplings inside the soup as well. Got myself a little cutting tray, trusty knife, and let's start chopping some stuff. I'm gonna throw in one of these just for the flavor spice in here and then this thing I'm not exactly sure what this is called but I was told it has some heat but not a lot it's a lot of stuff in here it smells pretty good too I ended up trying that marred green pepper. It does have a little bit of spice, but nothing crazy. So I think it's gonna be pretty good in there. And I did put a lot of it in there, pretty much the whole thing. 
So yeah, I think it's time to fill it up with water and start to boil this. Oh yeah, glad I brought the big pot today. And for how I'm gonna cook this tonight, I brought myself a little electric hot plate and this is, uh, I think 750 watts or 700 watts and my inverter is 800 watts. So it's like right at the max of it, but I got a good inverter and I used this last time and this is gonna be perfect for cooking our soup. This is starting to look nice and cozy in here. My table has a little bit of a wobble to it, but it isn't a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my little stove. And of course, oh, hit the power. So I got myself a watt meter. And I can go ahead, turn on my little stove. I'm pulling 720 watts right around there, which is perfect for our inverter. And maybe in about a half hour, 20 minutes, I don't know however long it's gonna take, we're gonna have some delicious soup. You can see my breath a bit. It's cold, but I'm not super cold. I ended up taking off the half, the top half of my suit and it feels pretty good in here. I might turn on the little heater in a little bit. We'll see what happens if it starts to warm up in here now that I have my little stove on. It'll probably warm up in here and I don't have to worry for a while. It feels really nice to just relax, make some delicious meal. I'm gonna have a very delicious soup on this cold day. I'm excited. This is a, a wonderful, a wonderful day. I think there's about uh, maybe a half hour left of sunlight. It's getting pretty dark out there right now, but we're just gonna be tucked away, enjoying a little camper right now. Ah, what a nice day. See, it's starting to heat up. You can see it's steaming a little bit. It's gonna take a little while though. There's a whole lot of liquid in there, but we got time. Just time to relax in our little camper. Gonna be some good soup. It's been going for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add in uh, some of this thyme. It smells so good. Mm. Just gonna go ahead and take this thyme, toss it in there. Probably not gonna eat that part just to get some of the flavoring. It's time to add in some noodles. Just a few noodles. To add some texture. The soup's coming along. It's been boiling for a while now. I've been cooking this maybe 40 minutes now. But we're doing good. Shouldn't be much longer now. I'm getting hungry and this is starting to smell really good and the broth tastes fantastic. It's got a nice spice to it, just what I wanted. All right, well our soup's doing pretty well. It's got a little bit of time left. I think it's time to make ourselves some of these dumplings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this can, pop it open, and I'll take a couple. I'm gonna cut them in strips. I'll throw one more in there. Just gonna roll them up a little bit. Ooh. And I can take the dumplings and just kind of toss them in. Then I can place the lid on top and they should cook in there. Check this out. The bread completely expanded almost over the whole top. It's like a crazy dumpling or biscuit. I don't even know what you want to call it. There's pretty much like a layer of bread on top and it's just absorbed the soup. A few more minutes and we're going to have ourselves a delicious meal. And I am so hungry. It took such a long time to cook this and I am so ready for it. All right, let's go ahead and turn off our stove. Oh, it looks so good. Look at this. Oh, oh wow, the biscuits or the bread just like cooked into some of the ingredients. Oh, oh it's so warm. Oh, I'm so hungry. And a little bit of parsley on top. Now this is about to be so good. The bread is cooked, the dumplings are cooked. Got some of the mushrooms, the potato, some of the beans. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Mm. 
It is so warm, so good. Mm. I have to be careful. I know that there's four pieces of a uh, habanero in here and I don't want to just eat those in one go. So I got to watch out for those. This is the perfect meal for today. A nice warm stew or soup full of all sorts of things. It's so hot. Mm. It's warming me up right away. It took so long to cook that meal. It took definitely over an hour. It was just such a large pot and this stove, it performed beautifully. It just takes a while because it's a, it's a pretty small stove. It's like 750 watts when normally they're like 1500 or something like that. But hey, it got the job done. We got some delicious warm stew. And for our battery, we are at, if you can see that, 58%. So I used like 12% of the battery to cook dinner, which isn't so bad for it was on over an hour. So we still have some good energy to spend tonight, but uh, we gotta be cautious of that for sure. Mm. The dumplings are fantastic. Mm. I've never done that before. I just found out about it. I was told about it and it worked really well. Honestly, fantastic. Hot. <laughs> finally time to relax it takes a lot of effort and time and energy to make and build these projects and get them out here and film it all and everything but it's always so worth it whenever i'm just having myself a nice meal just hanging out in these shelters and this one's awesome and i'm super happy with how it turned out i think it's a fantastic upgrade to the greenhouse don't get me wrong i love the greenhouse version of it i thought it was just a, a fun idea to repurpose something like that but this feels like a more solid structure i mean obviously this thing is like solid and honestly i was a little bit worried uh that the weight of it would be a problem especially with the snow because like the greenhouse probably weighed 10 pounds maybe and this is like a couple a hundred of pounds on top of that like all the wood and everything i put on top so i just added a lot of weight to this and there's a lot of snow out there maybe five or six inches and it definitely had trouble sometimes you know i go back and forth to kind of blast through it and i'm sure in some of the footage you could see me just kind of bouncing around and it's just because there was so much snow out here but this thing was able to kind of plow through it and i'm super happy about that i was kind of worried i would just be really stuck out here like no way i could get through the snow but i was able to do that i'm definitely happy i went with four motors on each of the tires the thing is pretty sweet to be honest mm. the mushrooms are so good mm. need some more of this stuff i really like the dumplings they are fantastic somewhere in here there's pasta <sighs> nice hot stew It's been pretty cold out lately. Last week, it's been down to zero, even a little bit lower at night. But tonight's a pretty warm night. It's around 22 degrees Fahrenheit, says my phone. And I am going to turn on my little buddy heater in a little bit. And that's going to warm this place right up. Mm. I feel so much warmer and just so much more energized right now after that. It's been a while since I've eaten and it took a while to cook this meal. But it was worth the wait. Dinner was fantastic. Just finished cleaning up my little table and now it's time to bust out the thermometer. And that's right, I have a little thermometer. It has an indoor and outdoor and we're gonna stick this thing outside and then we're gonna see the temperature difference between inside and outside. So I guess I'm gonna just go over here to the back, break the thermometer, open the door and I'm just gonna drop my flashlight and I'm just gonna stick it in the ground down here. There we go. Close the door, give it a lock. We can see, and for whatever reason, it looks like it's getting warmer outside. This was like a very cheap thermometer, so maybe, maybe I did break it when I just dropped it. <laughs> well, we'll see, because it's definitely not warmer outside. It is also time to turn on our little buddy heater. You just gotta light the pilot first. I'm gonna set this to low and watch it light up. Takes a minute to catch, but wow, it looks really cool on camera. And then it's gonna turn like a nice orange color. And I have done some testing on this myself, and I also do have a carbon monoxide meter right here, which will go off if it's above the levels it should be. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and crack. I'm just gonna go ahead and crack a window just for good measure. Just a little, well, let's just open the window. There we go. So we have a lot of airflow here, and I won't feel bad about having this thing on. And wow, you can see the little honeycomb structure of the little ceramic glowing. I always thought it was really cool. And this thing puts out a good amount of heat, so uh, it's going to be very warm in here. 
<sighs> Feels good to relax. What a wonderful night. I've had the little heater on for maybe about five, 10 minutes now. And we can see it's already starting to warm in here quite a bit. It's about 23 degrees Fahrenheit outside and 52 degrees Fahrenheit inside. And I'm not gonna be surprised if this just uh, keeps climbing. Starting to get nice and toasty in here. And I brought something pretty fun that I wanna try out. And that is, I brought a GameCube. <laughs> I wanna play some GameCube. It's been a long time since I've turned this thing on and hopefully it survived the rough ride and the freezing cold temperatures. But I think it'd be a lot of fun if we played some games on this. And I also brought my portable monitor. Hopefully it's not too close to this thing. Otherwise it's gonna catch on fire. <laughs> oh gosh, it's a little close. I think that's okay. And there we go thermometers in this thing and I'm gonna be running my GameCube obviously off my inverter and I also brought a little RCA to HDMI adapter because the GameCube obviously it's an older console and then I also brought a game inside of the console itself which is such an amazing game and that is Gauntlet Dark Legacy. I used to play this a lot with my brothers and it's been a long time since I played this game so I thought it'd be a lot of fun if I went ahead and started playing this. Hit the power. There we go, <laughs> we got the GameCube running. And you can see we're pulling around 20, 22 watts. So the GameCube, I guess, is a, is a very efficient system, just kind of sips power. Now this is a pretty crazy setup. I never thought I'd be playing an actual GameCube out here. And I'm happy that it survived the journey. It was below freezing, it got jostled around so much, and here we are. Let's have some fun. My favorite was always being the wizard. This is honestly such a fun game. Yellow wizard has gained a level. Whoa. It is getting toasty in here. The heat from this is just drying out my eyes, it feels like. It's 62 degrees in here Fahrenheit and 23 degrees outside. So there's like a 40 degree difference between inside and outside. And I even have my window open. <laughs> feels cold when I stick my hand out though. But in here, it is nice and toasty and warm. I'm so happy I brought out the GameCube. This is honestly too much fun. fun to play that game it's been a really long time since i played it it just brought back a lot of memories and it was a blast honestly to play the gamecube out here but right now i'm ready for a little bit of a snack and i got some pretty special planned some cookies i brought some cookies and we're gonna be making them in a little toaster oven that's right i brought myself a little toaster oven out here let me go ahead and plug it into the inverter the cool thing about winter camping is you can just keep a lot of perishables outside or just in your tent because the stuff doesn't get uh, very hot, even though it is getting warm in here now. And I guess these are small cookies, so I'm just gonna go ahead, squish it flat, a little tiny cookie, pick it up, place the cookie just down on it. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and set it to like uh, right there. And right now it's pulling, if you can see it, 560 watts. So this is like rated for 550. The cookie's getting cooked and I'm getting cooked. It is so hot in here, but it's honestly better than being cold. I like how it gets real orange. <laughs> Every once in a while, I like to just stick my head out the window. <laughs> it is dark out there. Pretty cold too, but nice and toasty in here. Check this out. Oh, wow. 
first one turned out perfect on the first go. <laughs> Whenever I tried to do bigger cookies, it would always end up burnt or kind of messed up. But this one, honestly, looks perfect. Mmm. I think I'm going to get a little plate of them. And I also brought myself some peppermint hot chocolate, which I'm going to have a cup of this with my cookies and just enjoy a nice little treat on this wonderful night. It is 69 degrees in here and 23 degrees outside. There is a massive difference between inside and outside. This little heater, fantastic. I'm, I'm just loving it. I am warm in here, almost too warm, but it feels good. It feels very good. Oh, that one looks even better. And it smells so good in here. Oh, it smells so good. And then for the hot chocolate, I actually brought a thermos full of hot water. It is from like, I don't know, 12 hours ago or something. So hopefully it's still hot because I'm going to use it anyway for some hot chocolate. All right, moment of truth. Is it still hot? Oh yeah, you can see it's steaming and it's 70 degrees in here. So you know it's still hot. Nice piece of cookie. Mm. Those are the best ones I've made in this toaster for sure. Mm. A little bit of hot chocolate. And if you're feeling adventurous, give it a little dip. I think I'm gonna have a few more of those. Those are pretty good. Cheers. Got myself a couple more cookies. Gonna finish the rest of my hot chocolate. It's a beautiful night. I am getting tired, but this is a nice little treat to finish off the night. You can't go wrong with just classic fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. Mm. Well. <sighs> what a wonderful treat. Just got finished baking our cookies with our little toaster oven. And right now our battery status is at 55%. We're doing pretty good. We're more than halfway still. And I'm pretty much done using electronics for the night. I also do have my electric blanket, which I am going to set up. But right now, I don't know if I need it. Mostly because it's just so hot in here. It's uh, 75 degrees in here and 23 degrees outside. So it is warm in here. And I don't really need to heat a blanket at this temperature. But I am going to turn this off at night. So I will probably turn on the heated blanket on like a really low setting so we'll probably wake up with around 50 percent of the battery which is going to be perfect for us to have our breakfast and then be able to drive on back which is going to be wonderful while the little toaster oven's cooling down i'm just going to rest my head on my little food box back here uh, i'm excited to finally pull out the sleeping bag in a little bit this little cabin or camper on wheels has been through Quite a few different revisions. Uh, the first one was just a chain driven motor, one single motor, 500 watt motor, and that thing just struggled and bogged down, but it was still able to get out there. Then the second version was 4,000 watt motors, so 4,000 watts. And then the third version is those same motors, but instead I built a, a cabin on top of it. And it's just fun to see the progression of this thing. I feel like this particular model is pretty much maxed out. I think I'm gonna have to start over from scratch if I want to build another, which I'd like to. In the future, I'd definitely like to build another thing like this. But I think this one is almost at its maximum. I can't really add much more weight to it. It's heavy. This thing is very heavy in the motors. It definitely strains the motors to their limit and pushing through the snow is such a big challenge for it. I'm sure it would have been easier to drive this thing if it was like just dirt or grass. It, it's way easier to drive it. I think this thing either needs uh, bigger tires, bigger motors, or uh, treads. Treads that don't rip, like some serious treads. Those are pretty expensive, so i kind of been hesitant about getting those. And uh, I don't know what else to do to this one. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them, what you think I should build inside of it or put inside of it or on the outside or anything like that. I just, I'd love to hear them and 
see what else uh, other ideas are out there. But yeah, other than that, I mean, this thing still got out here. It's a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to drive this thing, and I was having fun just kind of gunning it and just going straight as the thing was bouncing up and down and shaking. Uh, good times. But yeah, now it's just time to relax and enjoy the rest of the night in this very warm <laughs> 75 degrees in here. Uh, heated little cabin on wheels. This thing is awesome. And I even have the window open. It's still 75 in here. It's warm in here. <sighs> what a wonderful day. And then it's time to set up the sleeping situation. I've used this sleeping bag a couple times in the past, but I haven't taken out for really cold nights. But it is supposedly rated for a really cold rating. So tonight will be a good test for that. Oh, I got my heated blanket. I'm also going to go ahead and close the window. I no longer have my little heater on, so I'm not really concerned about that. But yeah, I am tired. It's been a long day, but a wonderful day. Got my heated blanket. I'm going to go and turn it on. I'm just going to turn it on halfway just to save some energy. But I am ready for bed. And in the morning, I'm going to wake up, have some nice warm breakfast, hang out for a little while, then drive the cabin back on home. <laughs> it's been a wonderful day. I'm really enjoying it, and I hope you're enjoying the adventure and journey with me as well. So, get some good sleep. And I'll see you in the morning. cold in here it was nice and warm in the sleeping bag all night long especially with the heated blanket but right now it's 25 degrees fahrenheit in here and 18 degrees fahrenheit outside so the first thing i want to do is i want to turn on some heat let's get this place back up to 70 degrees <laughs> uh, you can see all of the windows in the front oh wow it's actually frozen like a layer of frozen i'll have to wipe that stuff off before i kind of drive out of here the side windows have frost on them too it's just from uh, all the moisture probably honestly from when i made that soup last night i want to turn on our little heater there we go can't see the flames right now but i can feel them uh, it is a cold morning cracking my window a little bit because I have the little heater on. I slept really well, honestly. This was the comfiest I've slept in this uh, this shelter. Um, I think that's partially because I got a new mattress. The one I had before was really thin. And this one is a bit thicker, so it's more comfortable. <sighs> and I woke up to here in some uh, woodpeckers, which is interesting, uh, just poking away at some trees. It's pretty cold for them, but they gotta get some worms or food too. Speaking of that, I think in a couple minutes, after warming up a little bit, it's going to be time to make ourselves some delicious breakfast. So I ended up having on my heated blanket probably for half of the night, just because I didn't want to use all my battery. And speaking of battery, my battery's at 51%, so I did wonderful, and that's partially why I didn't want to sleep with my heated blanket on full blast. I just want to at least 25-30% for the drive back, and we are perfect. We're going to cook breakfast, and that's pretty much all the power we're going to use for this morning. Then we have a lot of juice to get on back. But we're doing good with power, so nothing to worry about. It's definitely starting to get warmer in here. You can see the walls are starting to melt a bit and actually drip quite a bit. Something I gotta think about in the future. We're at uh, 38 degrees Fahrenheit in here, 20 degrees outside, so we're above freezing in here. It already feels a lot warmer. And I'm also getting hungry. And for breakfast, I brought my little waffle maker because we're gonna have ourselves some little waffles. Got myself my waffle mix. And if you can tell, the oil I brought uh, it's super frozen, so I'm just going to set it by my little heater. And I like to store my water in containers like this, just so they don't freeze at night, because it gets cold. <laughs> Yo, 
got my waffle mix. I just went ahead and plugged in my little waffle maker. It's at like 350 watts. It's getting warm over here. And my oil is beginning to melt, which is perfect. The waffle maker is already starting to steam. It's about to put a lot more steam on the walls right there. And I'm pretty sure most of this was from making that soup last night. It put off so much steam, but it also warms up the room. <laughs> it is uh, 47 degrees in here right now, so we're doing pretty good. It's starting to feel nice and toasty in here. Lift it up. Whoa. Got ourselves a steaming hot waffle. Some fresh baked waffles on this cold winter morning. I'm gonna eat them when they're warm. Uh, I don't have any honey or anything, I kinda forgot that, but just some nice fresh baked waffles is gonna make a delicious breakfast. Mm. Ooh. Hot. These are very good. If I come over to the window, we can see there was actually some fresh snow. I think we did end up getting like an inch of snow last night. So it's gonna make it a little bit interesting trying to get out of here because there's already so thick of snow getting here. But I think I'll be able to follow hopefully the tracks of uh, getting here back. So it'll be a little bit easier. I hope anyway. Woo! Hot. <sighs> Some steaming waffles. Just a wonderful morning to end the adventure on. Mm. And I love my little windows. Yeah, everything's starting to melt now. All the windows, all the frost is melting on them. It's 52 degrees in here Fahrenheit. 24 degrees outside pretty big temperature difference already. I know last night it got up to like 75 in here Which is very warm. Oh, I'm sure it'll get to that eventually if I keep this thing on uh -huh. mm. The last bite of waffle mm. It's honestly been a wonderful adventure from building my new little cabin topper to driving this thing out here Camping spending the night in here playing some GameCube games making some delicious stew and waffles and cookies and just Really enjoying my night in here, staying toasty warm with my little heater, and I hope you enjoyed the adventure and the journey with me as well. In a couple minutes, it's gonna be time to clean up camp, then uh, head on back home. Wipe off all of the extra water. At least it's nice and warm in here, so it's melted. Now we got a nice view of the outside. I have all my gear set up here. I have it ratchet strapped this time down across just because uh, last time everything was bouncing around like crazy well I got all my gear packed up and now it's time to head on back home I just want to say thanks for stopping by everybody I truly hope you enjoy the adventure and the journey with me from building this thing all the different versions of it to taking it out here and just enjoying a winter night in this wild little mobile <laughs> cabin thing anyways it's time for me to head on back home I hope you enjoy the adventure and I just want to say thanks for stopping by everybody and I'll catch you on the next one the controller this controller thing's pretty sweet too all right till next time